Nishida Pronouns, and the graduate intern for the ILCP. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our two student speakers, Chloe Yoon and Caitlin Strickland. Chloe is a senior at Elon majoring in English with teaching licensure and minors in policy studies, poverty, social justice, and teaching English to speakers of other languages. In the School of Education, <clears throat> she works at the Curriculum Resource Center and is a School of Ed ambassador. In addition, she works with Elon Academy and the Writing Center to help students with their writing, amongst other skills. Chloe is currently serving as the Executive Vice President of Elon Student Government and President of Sigma Tau Theta, Delta, the English Honor Society. After graduation, Chloe hopes to teach abroad with English language learners and eventually pursue work in education policy. Caitlin is a senior teaching fellow majoring in history with senior with secondary education teaching licensure. She is the senator for the School of Education and is currently the co-chair of the Student Inclusive Campus Committee. Caitlin is also part of the Provost Advisory Committee and sits on the Academic Relations Council. When Caitlin is not in class, you can find her working at the Boys and Girls Club in Salvation Army of Alamance County, where she has now been employed for two and a half years. Caitlin's hobbies include attending Elon, sporting events, reading, writing, and listening to new music. Please welcome Chloe and Caitlin. <laughs> Of color on Elon's campus. 
There is no sign stating that this is what you must look like, yet the absence of conversations around diverse identities spoke loud. It created a culture. We felt very boxed, suppressing our authentic identities, hiding parts of ourselves that we knew existed to live every day in that culture. With the expectation to fit in comes the pressure of attempting to. Whether these were roles that others had set for us or roles that we believed others had set for us, coming into your identity at Elon is an entirely different experience when you're holding yourself to these standards. This looks a lot like going into all of your classes and being the only, and in that becoming a tokenized spokesperson, spokesperson for entire groups. When we do this, we fail to allow difference, even within groups, causing harm unto ourselves. But when you look around and see no, see no one that looks like you or share similar social experiences, it becomes a pivotal moment in the way that you see yourself. Feeling like the other is a symptom of loneliness, and this is a very common and very real experience that students of color have when entering the world of PWIs. In feeling this frustration at Elon, we wanted to ensure that this was not the future norm at Elon. We wanted diversity to be a conversation starter, not a conversation stopper. This starts at the micro level, person by person, including ourselves. We realize that the work began with us. Elon holds countless of events to educate students on these issues, but the true change begins when we all insert ourselves into different sectors with the knowledge and skills that we have obtained. Doing hands-on work is where you can begin to see the true impact of learning about the beauty and difference. We've had the experience to work hands-on in surrounding public schools where our, oh, I'm so sorry, I just read Caitlin's part. <laughs> um, doing hands-on work and being able to experience so many new and refreshing perspectives these past four years is what prepares us to be conscious of the identities around us. We are so grateful to the School of Education program for valuing the diversity of its student teachers and prioritizing the diversity of the future generations of students we will also go on to teach. The learning we have undertaken is not limited to one workshop or one lesson, but encompasses a curated mosaic of experiences. We've had the experience. <laughs> uh, to work hands-on in surrounding public schools where our education can be put into practice through placement. Uh, we've been able to do volunteer work for the School of Education and other clubs and organizations that we have all become a part of. We've had the opportunity to attend cultural events where we were able to learn about the struggles and triumphs of people who continue to break traditional narratives. We've been able to take capstone courses and attend informative workshops where we are encouraged to learn with intent and think critically about the problems that we face every day. We've been able to enroll in rigorous academic coursework that make us think deeply about the implications of our teaching practices from diverse learners or even to assessment where the only type of educator we know how to be is an equitable one. We've been able to go abroad where 23 of us went to New Zealand and one of us went to London, um, <laughs> where we all delved in a new culture, a new land and a new set of people. We've been able to engage with modules that challenge and question our beliefs and ideas. All these experiences come together to create knowledge, engage in direct experience, and understand perspective outside of our own identities so that we can do better, so that we can be better. With the education that we have received and the experiences that we have felt, we must recognize that we are more prepared to work with others and embark on our journeys. We must remember that there are so many places that need the knowledge that we have while simultaneously understanding that our work is nowhere near complete. If we have learned anything in this process, it is that none of us are perfect, but in that we have the capacity to improve. Where that room for improvement is present, true, true change is located. We will continue to make mistakes, but each time that we do, we'll learn how to be better. I look to see the ways in which we all grow into our roles as educators and continue to learn about the importance of understanding, supporting, and working with one another, with all of you working in classrooms across the country and world. Uh, more students will have an access to a more equitable education. In this, we can give them the tools that they need to create the changes that they want to see in their world. We have, uh, what, where we have achieved is only the starting point of the phenomenal contributions that our students will go on to share. And that's all that we have. <laughs> Thank you, Chloe and Caitlin, for your very insightful words. Next, we will hear from the rest of the graduating cohort in a short video. 
The ILCP has broadened my understanding of culture and identity and has therefore prepared me to not only respect, make visible, and understand the identities of my students, but also work towards educational equality as a part of my professional practice. ILCP's largest impact on my life is knowing that this journey of becoming interculturally aware is a lifelong process and that I have to put in the work every single day to become the person that I want to become, to have the identities that I want to have, and to be able to evaluate and understand each other on a more deeper level. Hi, my name is Grace Kennedy, and the ILCP has had an impact on me because it has taught me that our identities influence our values as well as influence what changes our values. My main takeaway from ILCP is that all experiences are valid, but we have to work explicitly to make sure all experiences are valued. ILCP has helped me become more comfortable and confident interacting with DEI topics as I enter student teaching and life post-graduation. Hi everyone, my name is Kesey and the ILCP impacted me by providing me with a lot of resources that I can use in my future to help me self-reflect on my own practices. The ILCP has had a really big impact on me, but I think my biggest takeaway um, is the recognition of how our identities shape our experiences. The ILCP has helped me better understand my identities and the importance of seeing the intersectionality of identities. I feel prepared to go into the classroom and validate the identities of my students, their families, and my colleagues. In the past four years, ILCP has led me to experiences where I have been able to listen to different perspectives, and I think that I learned that it's important to let others define what they need for themselves, and it is important for me to be an advocate for those needs. The ILCP has taught me the importance of diversity, equity, intersectionality, and more, and how it has an impact on me as a future educator. Hi, I am Maya Tice, and the biggest takeaway that I've had from the Intercultural Learning Certificate Program is that I've been able to explore my own identity and the identities around me. This program has furthered my knowledge of equity and social justice and definitely has helped me learn a lot about all of the cultures around me. The ILCP helped me learn more about my own identities, and it also pushed me out of my comfort zone and into my learning zone with many new and different experiences. The biggest impact that the ILCP has had on me has been of my understanding of how identity should be incorporated into lessons to ensure that your classroom is engaging and a safe space for all students, and that they feel loved and cared for and heard. Hi, my name is Megan and the ILCP further taught me the importance of celebrating cultural differences in our classrooms. My name is Caitlin Strickland and the thing that I found most impactful or the largest takeaway from ILCP for myself was the connection between understanding yourself and understanding others at a much larger scale. The ILCP program has really changed my perspective on the idea of identity and that it has taught me that identity goes way beyond the big eight social identities that people tend to think of. Hi, my name is Meredith and the ILCP has taught me how to become more cognizant of how to show up as an intercultural competent leader in and outside of educational environments. The ILCP has changed the way I see my own identity and the identities of those around me. I feel more equipped now to go into teaching in an equitable manner. The ILCP has helped me to begin thinking of issues of a diversity and open my eyes to the systems that create and perpetuate privilege and oppression. This experience has made me a better educator, citizen, and person. Hi everyone, I'm Siamara, and I think one of the biggest impacts that the IOCP had on me is in being able to better appreciate my own identities and intersections so that I've been able to better appreciate other people's intersections and identities as well. I would like to give a heartfelt thank you to the graduating cohort for participating in the short videos. As you can see, the ILCP has had a profound impact on our students. The work may not be easy, but the reward is well worth it. <coughs> I would like to now invite to the podium the Chair of the Department of Education and Wellness, Professor Marta Winter.
Tatum. 
my face. Congratulations to you all. Please join me in giving them a big round of applause. And Ms. Dean Bullock will head up to the stage. Don't worry. I don't know if I can be um, Kate and Chloe's um, thoughtful words, but. Um, one of the important things that I've learned from Cheryl is that this is a journey and each person's journey is unique. Tonight is a joyful celebration. Yes, we're gonna have class here in a second. I have a long journey with many hills and curves to see the ILCP come into reality. I first want to thank the students for your hard work in the program. This has indeed been a journey for you through a face-to-face, -face, online, and continually moving program to meet your needs as we weather that pandemic in all of its glory. So thank you all. In addition to enhancing your intercultural competence, you have increased dispositions you will need as educators, including resilience, perseverance, and patience. Resilient and steadfast through this journey has been our leader of the program, Dr. Cheryl Miller Dice. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Dice's long, li lifelong work has been centered around equity. This program is a reflection of her expertise and desire to help create better educators who lead from an equity lens. While others have helped along the way, Cheryl does not like when I talk about her, <laughs> Cheryl will talk about them in a little bit. Cheryl, your influence on all of us in the Watts Williams School of Education has a long reach. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I may just have to tell you later. <laughs> By working with you, it has made each of our DEI journeys more insightful. Thank you from all of us for your work and your passion to lead in this space. Okay, so throughout the creation and implementation of this program, the big question we kept asking ourselves is, does this work? Does going through this program really impact the intercultural competence of our emerging educators, AKA all of you cohort one. And are we meeting our mission of creating equity minded educators? So I have a little data for you prepared by Catrice and, and Cheryl on the results at a very 10,000 foot level. No personal information will be disclosed. Okay. Um, so this is the intercultural development inventory continuum and there are as you see five stages and you're all very familiar with this so if you're not this is what this is so i'm going to talk about some of the high level results that we have had through this program with this cohort the idi is a valid and reliable assessment that measures intercultural competence along a continuum as stated on the slide cohort one consists of 21 students. IDI results suggest considerable growth in ILCP participants intercultural development from program start to program end. At post-test, 70% of ILCP comp completers shifted orientations, which moved you move from one of these stages to the other on the continuum. Many shifted from one of the monocultural orientations into the transitional orientation of minimization are solidly into the two intercultural mindsets, which are acceptance and adaptation. 
More specifically, our post-test results show that 45% of candidates move to acceptance or adaptations, which are the two intercultural mindsets. Despite the developmental orientations into which students' pretest results fail, scores increase from pretest to post-test for 85% of candidates. This increase was an average of 25 points. 25% of candidates had learning gains of 40 points of more, and the most significant learning gain was over 64 points from a student who moved three orientation levels from denial to acceptance. These results are supported qualitatively by the feedback that ILCP staff have provided to students in their three course reflections, 11 co-curricular reflections on which four are modules specifically designed by the ILCP team that include debriefs on each module and a reflection on experiential learning after 40 hours in the field. These reflections demonstrate a deeper understanding of interculturality, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We also know that your other lived experiences, as discussed by Katie, Caitlin, and Chloe, such as your e-line coursework and interaction with mentors, have influenced your results as well. A nod to the Watts Williams faculty and staff as it truly takes all of us to meet our mission of creating equity-minded educators. Intercultural skills are paramount if we really want to engage with one another across cultural differences, not only to build mutual understanding and community, but also to deepen learning. Students, please know your journey as an equity-minded educator will continue. We hope that all of you will reflect on your results, because you always have homework in the School of Ed, and your impressive growth and set a target for the next stage of your intercultural development. We look forward to watching each of you grow. I'd like to now call Dr. Dice back up to the podium. end of our celebration today and I want to take the time to say thank you so please bear with me a few minutes as I humbly thank as I humbly say thank you to the many souls who made this day possible it takes a village to raise a child and it takes a team a collective to operate a program like this Creating a new program takes vision. And as such, I would like to thank Dr. Leo Lambert, President Emeritus and Professor of Education for his vision. About eight years ago, Dr. Lambert met with the staff of the Creed before his summer meeting with SGA. As we gathered in the Creed with a few other campus administrators, Dr. Lambert explained his vision that he would like all Elon students to graduate from this institution with the necessary intercultural skills to engage across differences. His vision became a charge to the staff of the Creed, and most of you know I was faculty fellow at that time in the Creed, to create a program centered on intercultural competency and learning. So thank you, Dr. Lambert, for your vision, and I'm glad that you're here today to see the first cohort of Elon students to achieve your vision. Dr. Lambert, could you please stand and we'll give you a round of applause. I would also like to say a special thank you to Carla Fullwood, a director in the creed at the time, who took the lead and created the original proposal for this certificate. I tell people I assisted her in the creation, but we both jointly created this certificate. Carla's intellectual work is the foundation of this certificate program. The program that we see today would not have been possible without the visionary leadership of Mr. Tyrone Jean, former director of the Creed and assistant dean, and he came all the way today, two hours drive, to see you all. D. 
Joaquin Kai, as we call him, was integral in creating the structure of this program, the modules, everything that you see today in the School of Ed related to the ILCP can be attributed to this man's leadership. I remember when we went to Maryland to get trained um, as IDI administrators to administer this instrument. And on the way back, we got caught in a snowstorm. And Ty held that wheel on 85. And we saw so many cars and ditches, but Ty got me back to Greensboro, back to my family. That's the kind of leader he is. Thank you, D. Ty. Also, our first MHC graduate apprentice, Marge Jackson, Marge. Marge was integral in supporting cohort one, you all remember. And Marge graduated from the MHC last year and came back today to celebrate with you all. So thank you, Marge, for all your hard work. We started with 20 students, and we currently have 180 students in the ILCP. And I would like to thank our three program assistants and faculty support. MHU students, Nick Bordeaux, Katrea Harvison, and Madison Fields from the law school. And our faculty support, Allison, I see it, saw Allison somewhere, Allison Bryant. These are the folks who take care and take the time to provide quality feedback to our students. And I have been blessed to work with my intern for this year, MHE student Jamie Wire. Jamie, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do when you graduate in the spring. <laughs> Jamie has been an integral part of the day-to-day -day management of the ILCP. Jamie started as a program assistant last year and came back this year to be the intern for the program. Jamie's administrative skills, disposition, knowledge, and feedback to students on their reflections are of the highest caliber. Jamie, thank you for your hard work. The ILCP is housed in the Dean's office, and the staff in that office are central to that program. Thank you to Dr. Patrice Offman for managing task stream. That's a Herculean task. Yes. Every semester, Catrice goes to work to create the cohort in Task Stream so you can upload and save all those beautiful things that you had on your posters. I see the students nodding their heads, they know. Catrice is also our, our assessment person and she helps us to think through the assessment pieces of this program. Thank you, Dr. Hoffman. And special thanks to Celeste Richards who manages all the staff's paperwork and HR protocols for this program. I know she's tired of me by now. But thank you, Celeste, for your work. And to Miss Jennifer Strange. Everything that you see here today, from the banner, the stoles, the program, Jennifer has managed it all. Sometimes I stop by her desk to say, Jennifer, I'm thinking of this. And all of a sudden, it's done. Your commitment to this program is greatly appreciated. You work tirelessly to make this day, you work tirelessly to make this day a reality for our students. From the very first time that you gather the cohort together and we try to figure out who's actually on the list, who's actually a sophomore, thank you, Jennifer, for that. <laughs> to our department chair, Marna Winter, thank you for all your support of this program and giving me the space to do this work. We've all, you've always been an advocate for social justice and change. To Dean Ann Bullock, thank you for your brave leadership to create space for diversity, equity, and inclusion work in the SOE. From the day I talked to you about the certificate program in 2018 to 2019, you understood the importance of Dr. Lambert's vision, and you created space in our school to have a discussion about this program and for our faculty to learn more. School of Ed faculty, thank you for voting on and approving this program for our students. Our mission in the School of Ed is to prepare equity-minded educators. This is not easy work. 
This work is nuanced and complex and tied to a sense of self. And as a result of your leadership, we are now an example to other schools of education in the state and the country, as well as K through 12 entities who want to know more about our work. So thank you. And to other representatives who are here today, and our interim superintendent here is here, and Dr. Emily Mobley from the Governor's School in South Carolina is also here to take a look at our program. Thank you for showing up. To parents who are here, thank you for showing up. We are planting seeds in the SOE, School of Education, with a hope in the unseen that they will germinate. Congratulations, Cohort One. And thank you all for coming. This is a, an historic day in the School of Education. Please feel free to mingle and enjoy the refreshments. Congratulations and thank you.